Part 1. 1. You are going to hear a conversation between an agent and a client. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Are you open yet? Yes, we are. Come in. Would you like to rent an apartment in the city? Well, kind of. I'd rather rent one near the harbor if possible. Oh, okay. Do you like the water? Yes, I do. But I actually repair sailboats for a living. So I'd like to be close to work. That's understandable. We all want to live close to work. Well, I think I have something near there. How many rooms would you like? Just one. I'm alone. But I would like to have an extra room for my dog. So you'd like two rooms and an apartment that accepts animals. Hmm. Here's one. It's one block up from the harbor and renting for $445. How's that? That's perfect. Just what I was hoping to pay. What floor is it on? Floor? Oh, it's on the twelfth floor. That's too high. I'd like to be on the first or second floor so that I don't have to use the elevator. My dog, he's scared of them. Oh, well then, that's a little more complicated. Let me make a few calls. Okay, I think I found a couple more for you. Here's one that might suit your needs. How much? $395 a month. That's cheap. But it's only a one-bedroom, a large one, but it's still just one room. Oh. Well, regardless of whether the room is small, I still need a separate room for my dog. What else do you have? Then I have a two-bedroom for $565 on the second floor that is a little further away from the harbor. How far? About a half mile, and they accept pets. That's a little more than I had planned on paying but I guess I could look at it. What's the address? 224 Williams Avenue, Harbor Square. 224 Williams Avenue. Got it. Now look at questions 7 to 10. As the talk continues, answer questions 7 to 10. What else is included? Let's see. It has a washer and dryer, refrigerator and stove, a bed, dressers and shelves, and access to a swimming pool, game room, and gym. Ooh, I'll definitely take a look. Hi, how did you like it? It's great. I love the amenities, but the bed and furniture are awfully dirty. Can they replace those before I move in? Sure, that shouldn't be a problem. Anything else? Yeah. I didn't see anywhere to park my car. Is there a parking lot in the basement? Yes, there is. Would you like to rent a space? No, I'd like that to be included in the rent. Oh, well, I'll see what I can do, but I can't guarantee that. Do you want to take it anyhow? If those two issues were solved, I would love to take it. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. 
Part 2 You will hear someone giving instructions to staff at a festival. First, look at questions 11 to 13. As you listen to the first part of the interview... Good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the Castle Pop Festival. My name is Sandy, and I'm the general manager of Castle Pop Entertainments. And I just want to take a few moments to mention a few things to you before you go and have your detailed briefings in your work groups. Uh, you all have a copy of the plan of the festival grounds. Now, most things are obvious, but I'd like to point out first... The visitor toilets here along the side of the main area. Kindly do not use these yourselves. Your own facilities, the staff toilets, are beside the breakfast tent. Also, there are public telephones behind the stage. I mention these two things because they are places that visitors often ask for. For yourselves, one of the most important places is the staff meeting point. This is new this year, and the only thing to remember is that it exists and that when you refer to a meeting point between yourselves, you need to make clear which one you are talking about. The staff meeting point is between Campsite 1 and the Disabled Viewing Area. This is not marked on the general maps, but it is marked on the maps you've got there. The visitor's meeting point is, as you can see, in the centre of the main area, between the breakfast tent and the entrance. Now, another important facility is the first aid tent. This is a big round tent, so you can't miss it. It's on the right-hand side of the entrance, again as you come in. There are many other first aid facilities all over the festival site. In fact, there is a first aid box in every tent and sales point, but this is the central point. Finally, I wanted to mention the security on the site. Every year the festival gets bigger and bigger, and so every year we have to increase the security arrangements. We have a number of small security offices, one being near the entrance, but the main security office is opposite the disabled viewing area. It's next to the Old England pub so that the officers can keep an eye on what's going on there. And, of course, in that office there is a full supply of first aid equipment too. And don't forget, those of you who can't wait till you get your pay at the end of the festival, there are some cash machines in the wall of the Old England pub. Now look at questions 14 to 20. As the interview continues, complete the sentences. I do hope you will enjoy working with us this year. It's always good to see some of last year's faces back with us again. We hope this year to put on an even better festival than before. The first year we put on a festival, we called it the Mountain View Pop Concert. <laughs> and it was a pop concert rather than a festival. We held it inside the castle, and you could see the mountains in the background. It was very small and personal. Then we held it in front of the castle, with the castle in the background, and then we started calling it the Castle Festival. Now, this year, we have moved further away into the fields. The advantage is that the castle and the mountains are both there in the distance, but we have as much space as we want in the fields. 
the only problem with the fields is that sheep use the fields during the spring months and they leave little messages for us all over the place. So please be careful and encourage the visitors to be careful too. Now, it just remains for me to let you know the times of your detailed briefings, which are as follows, and I'm telling you these as they are not, I repeat, not as written down on your welcome letters. Those of you who are working on the children's zone, your meeting is at 2pm in Campsite 2. Those of you on the security team need to meet behind the stage at 3.15pm. For the people on first aid, please do not meet in the first aid tent. There will not be enough room. But meet at the entrance gates at 4pm. Finally, we need everybody, and I do mean everybody, on duty on Monday morning at 8am for the final clean-up. I'd like to remind you that Monday is the final day of work, not the Sunday. People not coming to the final day will lose 50% of their pay. The meeting place for that is Campsite 1. Now, good luck and let's make this the best festival ever! That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. Listen to somebody giving a talk about how setting goals can help you achieve more. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see that so many people managed to make it. An achievement in itself when I'm sure you're all so busy. This evening, I'm going to talk with you about setting goals and how setting goals can help you understand what you really want to achieve. First, though, I'd like to start by saying what I think achievement actually means. I think some people think it's simply about being successful in a job or making money. But it certainly doesn't have to mean that. Achievement is simply accomplishing goals that you set for yourself, doing what you plan to do. And people might plan to do all sorts of different things. Achievement is about realising your dreams. I would also like to say that to achieve, you must have belief. Belief that you can do whatever it is you want to do. There is more to achievement than simply wanting to do something. Anyone can say that they want something, but actually getting it is not so easy. To get it, you must believe that it is yours. Not having belief is the main reason that so many people do not achieve. If you really want something, you must talk and act like you already have it. Then you have belief and then you will achieve. So, goal setting. Goal setting is about imagining the future and then turning the dream into a reality. Setting goals helps you to be clear about what you really want and helps you concentrate on getting what you want. Setting goals will help you see what is stopping you from knowing what's important. And because achieving goals makes you feel good, 
You will be more confident and succeed more easily. Goal setting is something that all achievers do, whether they are high flyers in business or successful athletes. It is important that you set both long term and short term goals. First, you need to have an idea of what you want from life. I call this the big picture. Then you break this down into a number of smaller goals that you need to achieve in order to achieve the overall goal. As I say, the first step is to see the big picture. Think about what you want in the next 15 or 20 years. Doing this will influence all the smaller goals that you set yourself. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. You need to think carefully about different areas of your life and how they influence each other. You should identify the important areas of your life and try to set goals in each of those areas. Here are the areas that most people want to focus on, but remember that everyone is different. First, Think about your career. How important is your career to you? Do you want to be a manager or run your own business? Or are you happy working for other people? Connected to this is the financial side of your life. What sort of income do you want to have? Is wealth important to you? You need to think about long term relationships. At what age do you hope to be married? Do you want to have children? How much time do you want to spend with the people you love? You need to think about your health and how that could change what you can achieve. How will you stay healthy as you get older? Do you do anything that is not good for your health? And how will you try to do those things less or stop doing them completely? Finally, you need to think about your free time, your hobbies and interests. How much time do you want to have to do what you really enjoy? It is difficult to achieve goals in one area if you feel that you don't have the time to do the things that really make you happy. Now, when you have this overall picture, try to set yourself one goal for each area. Make sure the goals are what you really want and not what you think other people want from you. Of course, In life, it is important to make the people around you happy, but you must focus on what you want. Now, I will go on to talk about how to break your lifetime plan down into short term goals. But first, does anyone have any questions about what I've said so far? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear a discussion about how to manage time. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for today's discussion is time management. It's very important that you develop effective strategies for managing your time to balance the conflicting demands of time for study, leisure, earning money and job hunting. Here is an exercise which will help you to identify areas in which you might be able to improve your time management. Try to answer the 40 questions as honestly as you can and then score yourself from 1 to 4 in each area. You have 5 minutes to finish them. OK, please stop and look at the screen. According to your answers, you can find in which area or areas you get the minimum scores and I can give you some strategies to improve them. I find I get the lowest score in the area of using lists. I don't have the habit of keeping a list. What use does it have? Keeping a to-do list is a useful reminder system to tell you of when you need to do what. Don't try to remember everything in your head. Carry a pen and paper or organizer wherever you go to write down the things you need to do, including appointments and deadlines. Do you think a daily list of tasks is necessary? Yes, it is an excellent way to focus your mind on important objectives. Make sure you update your list daily, crossing off completed tasks and adding new tasks. Urgent or important tasks can be highlighted with an asterisk. I find it difficult to set goals. How do I set myself specific and clearly defined goals? You must make sure that these goals are realistic and achievable. To do this, you first need to examine your present situation and assess what goals are important to you and what action you need to take to achieve your target. I am in the final year and trying to find a job. I can't combine the pressures of intensive study with finding time to apply for jobs. Sometimes you need an alternative route to your goal in case you have to change your plans. For example, taking a relevant postgraduate course if you can't get a job. Whenever the examinations sneak up, I start getting nervous. I don't know how to organize my time to deal with so many subjects. You should have a regular venue for revision, such as the library, where you're free from distractions. Plan out a revision schedule or timetable so you devote enough time to each subject. You can also use past examination papers when revising to familiarize yourself with the sort of questions that might be asked. When revising, take a few minutes break every so often to clear and refresh your mind and allow some time off for complete relaxation. I'm always late for everything. You know, the sort, the, the deadline of papers and seminar reports. Sometimes I cannot make decisions immediately, so I ignore them on purpose. So you fall into the area called procrastination. I think it's important that you manage your fear of doing things you don't want to do and realize that the fear is often far worse than any possible negative result. The best time to do something is usually now. Taking action generates the energy for further action. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.